In the 1980s, heavy metal was becoming popularized in the United States and actually breaking into mainstream formats of entertainment. Visually, this meant that people unfamiliar with names like Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, etc. were all seeing black leather, hearing loud music, and being exposed to dark imagery, including depictions of the devil. That would not sit well with the Christian moms of America. Violence in rock and roll lyrics, and where the record should be rated X. It is like going to a porno movie and um, seeing everything, only it's a porno hearing session. While the parents' groups are calling for a voluntary restraint, some in the industry fear encroachment on the First Amendment. So-called porn rock is expected to be the subject of congressional hearings. There have been documentaries and think pieces about satanic panic in the past, but I wanted to give a brief history lesson on this so I can talk about how satanic panic is still affecting music today. Oh yeah, our current generation is still dealing with the panic. In the 1980s, youth were being ignored and childhood rebellion and juvenile delinquency was seeing a rise. As a result, the politicians and religious leaders pointed their finger to the easiest target, heavy metal. Are there influences trying to steal your soul? Well, perhaps no example of what can come along to warp the minds of youth stands out stronger than that of what's known as the violent punk rocker movement that originated in England. Rock concerts at Kemper Staple have come under fire by a small religious group. But as Doug Sudoff reports, the group now has the support of at least one city councilman. We could require that group to sign a contract that they would not promote illegal activity and to require them to put up a performance bond which could would be forfeitable if they violated. Claiming Ozzy Osbourne and Judas Priest were evil back then was an easy call-out. How could someone dispute it? Bands and artists like this dress in black and sing about death and evil. Clearly, that's why the sweet American youngsters are all becoming degenerates. Going into the mid-80s with heavy metal and fear-mongering both on the rise, the Gore family was also having issues. At the time, Senator Al Gore and wife Tipper were the innocent all-American family until Tipper found out her daughter was listening to Prince. After one Prince song, the pitchforks and flaming torches were brought out to attack all explicit music in any form. Our songs about glorifying incest, there's songs about rape, thrill killing, uh, sadomasochism. There's a song that goes, quote, not a woman but a whore, I can taste the hate. Well now I'm killing you, watch your face turning blue, unquote by a group that has sold two million copies of that particular album. They're very popular with young kids. After enough riled up politicians, religious leaders, educators, and outraged parents during the Reagan era got together, action was taken to have a hearing about how this awful music could be sold and why it shouldn't be allowed. The PMRC hearings, standing for the Parents Music Resource Center founded by Tipper Gore, were placed specifically to pressure the music industry into regulating explicit content in music. It got ugly. This also led to what was known as the Filthy 15. 15 songs used as examples of corruption to the youth through violent, obscene, and even occult-filled lyrics. The metal songs especially aligned with evil. This ranges from ACDC, Motley Crue, and Twisted Sister, all the way to Madonna and Cyndi Lauper. On the list also was Darling Nikki, the Prince song that caused Tipper Gore to clutch her pearls. These hearings were well documented, and the music industry not only defended itself in a professional manner, but also got names like Rob Halford and Dee Snider to come in and enter the fray. The hearing with Dee Snider and members of Congress was a key focal point. Somebody approached our office that they want the Senate committee is having hearing on censorship with the PMRC and wanted to know if I would come and speak. I knew that they viewed me as just another dunderheaded rocker and they would bring me in make me look like a fool, and I would help their cause. And I play in these people like, you know, I mean, I've been, you know, mentally I'm setting these guys up for the kill. Since I seem to be the only person addressing this committee today who has been a direct target of accusations from the presumably responsible PMRC, I would like to use this occasion to speak on a more personal note and show just how unfair the whole concept of lyrical interpretation and judgment can be. And I am just tearing apart everything that they've accused me of disproving without a, beyond a shadow of a doubt that everything they've accused me of has been wrong, false, and they are scrambling, scrambling, scrambling. Uh, people can interpret it many ways. Uh, Ms. Gore was looking for sadomasochism and bondage and she found it. Someone looking for surgical references would have found it as well. I can't help that Tipper Gore's got a dirty mind and, and Al Gore just, oh my God, you know, he really jumped over the table. The hearing ended with a parental advisory warning being mandatory on music with explicit content. The PMRC got what they wanted by warning consumers what to avoid, but the musicians got the best deal out of it because it was proven statistically that for 10 years solid, albums with the parental advisory label would sell significantly more copies than other albums from the same genres and labels. All that happened, the argument of satanic panic was weaponized, decisions were enforced, 
and the panic still existed because heavy metal was still popular, and the youth were not instantly transformed into Sunday school attending angels as the PMRC tried to make them out to be. The tragic side of this period of metal history was that there was a significant number of deaths in the 80s that people were trying to say were influenced by metal. Several suicides and deaths had an unrelated theme in that a number of the victims were metal fans. That is more than enough fuel to add to the fire for media and fear-mongering religious figures. Judas Priest was even sued as being responsible for influencing a young fan into killing themselves through evil messages via backmasking and dark imagery. Yeah. Thank you. It, the yeah is the exhalation of breath? Yes. Uh, is that a normal part of your singing? That's the way I've always sung, that's just my style. Are there subliminal duets on the Better By You, Better Than Me song? Absolutely not. This was not an isolated event, as other bands and artists were being targeted for having either indirect or direct influence on teenage deaths in America. Judas Priest was cleared of everything, the backmasking argument proved to be nothing, and the claims of Satanism in metal continued on through anger and fear-muggering into the 90s, even outside of metal where grunge, industrial, and other subgenres would then be targeted. It's also worth pointing out that many of the bands in heavy music at the time were dressing the parts, but in no way evil. I really agree with Alice Cooper's explanation on this one specific argument. If you're looking for Satanism, first of all, you don't look to rock and roll. A bunch of kids running around playing loud guitars and going like that. That's Halloween. It was at that point in the early 90s where you would turn on a TV and see a screaming televangelist wanting donations to fight the devil and the evils of music. You'd then change the channel and see Soundgarden's video for Jesus Christ Pose on MTV. It was a self-fueling fire at that point. Satanic panic in heavy metal and rock music is complicated. On the one hand, the panic led to increased censorship and self-censorship in the music industry, which had a significant impact on the way that heavy metal and rock music were produced and consumed. On the other hand, the panic also helped create a sense of community and solidarity among heavy metal and rock fans who felt unfairly targeted by the media and other authorities. Today, heavy metal and rock music continues to be popular genres, even if not the most popular, and many of the bands that were accused of promoting Satanism during the Satanic panic are now considered legends of the genre. There are many beats and notable events in all this that I can't cover due to time and wanting brevity for the video. The point I want to make after all this is that satanic panic in music is still prevalent. It's just not targeted toward hard rock and metal anymore. The reason? I think it's because heavy music isn't as popular, while other styles of music are. Some of the most popular acts in music today are the new targets from the religious rights because they are the most popular. There is significant aim from religious groups and right-leaning media accusing Satanism toward LGBTQ performers like Lil Nas X, Sam Smith, Demi Lovato, all of which have been rolling with the accusations in parody. These current popular artists outside of heavy metal are succeeding in what they are doing and are at times playing with the absurd labeling of Satanism and dressing the part which in turn is getting them more attention and eventual revenue. Just like in the 80s, the attempt to silence and censor these artists is now causing them to succeed even more through indirect ways. And also like the 80s, the zealotry associating anything LGBTQ along evil and Satanism, yeah, that's still going on in America today. Somehow. Heavy music definitely has its targets, but it's the LGBTQ artists who are now the victims of satanic panic mostly. All because it gets people's attention for a righteous crusade against the evils of Satan when in reality, these artists have nothing to do with any religious side. It's just them trying to be musicians. My argument for this both reflects on the past era of music and today. If these people are worried about satanic values, cult-like violence, etc., then why aren't they focusing their anger on the groups and musicians and artists who come out as satanic? instead of artists who have nothing to do with it. Logically, a band like Behemoth should be a great focal point for the religious conservative media heads to target. But as Behemoth isn't a mainstream name, it won't be the focus. Demi Lovato and Lil Nas X will be because they are mainstream, LGBTQ, and successful. It's all about the uproar and getting attention, not the actual claim problem of satanic values and the decay of society. Back in the 80s, they were isolating incidents with satanic panic and looking for a common denominator to point the finger at. To some extent, heavy metal work as a good target, especially as fans wanted to rebel. The demons of heavy metal are now swapped with gay, bi, non-binary, and trans artists who are being positioned to align with satanic principles, which is a stretch even by biblical definitions. Of all the many quotes from names like Rob Halford, Ozzy Osbourne, Alice Cooper, Dee Snyder, etc., back in the 80s against satanic accusations, similar quotes are having to be made in defense from LGBTQ artists today. GLAD president and CEO Sarah Kate Ellis said about satanic accusations, LGBTQ people are not aligning with satanic 
Satan. We are a people of faith and anyone who uses some stage costumes or a music video to make generalizations about LGBTQ people is failing into outdated and debunked fear tactics that are rooted in inaccuracies and anti-LGBTQ animus. 40 years after that original bout of satanic panic and music is still being affected, not for the values, but to rile people up for attention. Whether it's heavy music or not is irrelevant because if there is a discriminating group that already doesn't like you, they will look for a reason to call you out. The music you listen to, regardless of genre, is an easy target. It's also easy to point the finger back at those screaming, condescending people saying that bands and artists are evil. Normally, it's better to take the high road and explain clearly what your music is about, but it's also worth remembering that this is the music industry. The most evil and satanic people are the ones pushing bad contracts.